tonight. University of Calabar Teaching Hospital commences gastroenterology and gastrointestinal health program in collaboration with Massachusetts General Hospital Harvard Medical School, USA. Plus, Minister of Sport Development, Senator John Wanino, works in Okbala Tania's health situation. Details of these and more shortly. Good evening. Thank you for joining me on NTA News Highlights. I am Arut Ndem. Now the news in detail. The University of Calabar Teaching Hospital can now intensively manage gastroenterology and gastrointestinal health conditions, thereby reversing medical tourism to the advantage of the country. This feat is being achieved as the tertiary health facility commenced advanced endoscopy program in collaboration with Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard Medical School, USA. Maureen Leo Ajong reports. The advanced endoscopy program at the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital is the outcome of a memorandum of understanding between the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital and the Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard Medical School, USA, to transfer knowledge on intensive endoscopy management procedures to the medical team of UCTH Calabar. When this succeeds, when we have set this up fully, it will stem the tide of medical tourism for those conditions that we can deal with. In addition, our catchment zone extends beyond Nigeria. We receive patients from Cameroon, we receive patients from Equatorial Guinea. So instead of having outward medical tourism, these things that we are trying to do alongside all other hospitals, as under the guidance of the Federal Ministry of Health and the Coordinating Minister, these things that we're trying to do will now be able to reverse medical tourism. So instead of it being outward, it should now be inward, with people coming from different African countries to come and acquire treatment and knowledge here. As part of this program, it's a, it's a two-year collaboration. As part of this program, we expect that at the end of it, we will actually be an advanced endoscopy training center for the sub-region. Here are the medical conditions to be managed at the center. For instance, you see that Mr. President has an illness and goes to France or Britain or America. It is for the superiority of the type of tests and investigations that they would do. Not really in terms of the prescription the doctors will give. Because once you know the cause, uh, then Treating is not difficult. So for the digestive system, the gastrointestinal system, what is going to be done here is one of the highest levels of investigations to find diseases in very difficult parts of the gastrointestinal tract, especially something like the pancreas. Well, even if you don't know anatomy or you don't know what the pancreas is, uh, people who suffer from diseases like diabetes, part of it comes from the pancreas. So the layman should understand that we're trying to find what and what are the causes of things like this, then cancers. And you know the pancreas is lying almost at the back of the abdomen, so it's difficult to find. And this type of advanced investigation always will demonstrate it improves the diagnosis when you have done things like CT scan and co and still cannot reach it. This is the final habitat. The management of University of Calabar Teaching Hospital and the delegation of the Massachusetts General Hospital Harvard Medical School reiterated commitment to ensure the program succeeds in the institution, making UCTH Calabar a leading center for advanced endoscopy management in the country. This program is an advanced endoscopy program where we hope to commence um, advanced endoscopic techniques like ERCP currently and in the future to come 
um, EUS, which is endoscopic ultrasound. Um, this, I would say, is the first of its kind in the southern part, well, south-south part of Nigeria. And so the procedures we're focused on are ERCP and EUS. So ERCP is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, and EUS is endoscopic ultrasound. And so these are procedures used to diagnose and treat what we call pancreas and biliary diseases. So an example would be if someone has cancer, let's say cancer of the pancreas, sometimes that can cause a blockage in the bile ducts. So those are the pipes that come out of the liver. And you'll see sometimes people turning yellow or they lose weight. So the procedures we do can help to diagnose, first of all, do they have a cancer of the pancreas, which maybe was picked up on a scan, and then can we put a stent, which is like a little hose pipe, to open things up to relieve the symptoms that they have. Uh, sometimes people can have stones in the bile ducts. So you hear, you hear about gallstones, so sometimes those stones sort of trickle down into those pipes that come out of the liver. So the ERCP um, is a procedure that can, we can go in and we can try to remove those stones and make the patient feel better. COPY program, which is ongoing at the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital Calabar, is at a time of the workshop offering free endoscopy treatment to patients. In Calabar, Maureen Leo Ajom, and in News. Ahead of the new season in athletics, athletes under the Cross River State Sports Commission are leaving nothing to chance as they prepare for the various competitions lined up for the year. Sport correspondent Paul Abel visited UJ Swinney Stadium where the athletes are currently camping for training. One of the major challenges plaguing the Nigerian system is lack of early preparation, which is also visible in sports. Being an Olympic year with several competitions on the cards to serve as qualifiers, these athletes in Cross River State are making use of available resources to ensure they are ready for these competitions. We are putting ourselves together, getting ready for the Commonwealth Games in Ghana. And before then, I think we have some competitions to run here in Nigeria, which I think the first one is a dynamic competition at which we will hold in Lagos. That, was, that is the first one before the next trials that will be for selection to the All-African Games. Okay, we have the All-African Games this year. So I'm really training hard for that. At least let me make the team so I can attend for the African Games and maybe think higher for the Olympic. Ogun 2004. And you are seeing how we are, you see the athletes and you see what is happening. And I'm sure the government that as far as track and field is concerned, we will do well, we are ready. ready. My advice to the athletes is that they should work hard so that it is from the all this competition we have been attending that they can select the all african games and you know in track and field you based on time if you are running 100 meters you run 10 0 10 1 you are entitled for the all african games and we have other competition too which we have been doing and the uh, let me assume that, uh, especially in middle and long distance, almost this uh, last year, we have almost five competitions that one of my boys here, uh, uh, Sergio Isma, which have been running all the marathon, he had been running almost four. I think the last one was this December, Equal Marathon. He was the overall, that is taught for the international and then first Nigeria. Kenya, uh, Ethiopia was first, Kenya was second. He was taught overall, which in Nigeria he was the first Nigeria. So with that, we believe that uh, Cross River State we are good to go. This time we have to start preparing early from last year. Uh, from November we start training, preparing for our season this year. You know, in March we have the All African Games. In August we have the Olympics. You know, in between we have some meets in between. You know, we have to travel to different states to see how our athletes qualify for Olympic and the African Championship. I train, I have a lot of stars here. You know, in Javelin, we have the, num the rank number two in the country, Victoria Parika. Patience Okun, you know, is a top chart preparing for the Olympics. We have Melody, and is the number, number two in the country in the catalog. 
We have a lot of there. I have some juniors, you know. I can't mention, but those are the few I can reach. After since the last Olympic, they have not done anything. You know. Okay, look at now. Few months to the Olympics. Olympics are gone. Athletes supposed to be in camp. Now we are training the athletes individually now. Training grants need to give to the athletes for them to prepare in other countries. They move and go for the camp. You know, early preparation is the key of success. That is why here we start preparing them ahead of time. With the sacrifice by the athletes and coaches, the hope is that they will make the state proud when the competitions take effect. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NGA News. Sports Minister Senator John Waneno has reached out to the father of Okpala Tanya, Nigeria's former tennis sensation, where videos went viral recently, revealing the lamentable state of the one-time tennis champion. The minister contacted Tanya's father, who briefed him on her current condition and the genesis of her problem. He also confirms to the sport minister that the Nigerian Tennis Federation paid for Tanya's first rehabilitation many years ago, when her condition became public knowledge. But sadly, the former tennis star relapsed after a short while. Senator Eno lauded the governor of Anambra State for swinging into immediate action to remove the former tennis star from the streets. In a press release signed by the minister's special advisor, media, Dinah Merin San, the minister has the W for activating and enabling a welfare system that caters to serving and retired athletes. That's it on our news for tonight. Thank you for watching.